the mud bricks here in Cameroon, Africa, are being laid with cement uh, because it seems to be uh, considered a more prestigious material to use because you have to pay more for it. But they are surely paying more for it because the hard picture frame of cement, just like in the United States, it, when this brick unit is swelling from absorbing moisture, is just uh, exfoliating and falling out. Uh, where they have mud brick buildings that are laid with lime and they are 100 years old and they're still around. So today we're actually, I never planned to do a lime talk, but we are going to do something at the job site to show uh, people how to uh, apply, uh, use lime mortar for laying the units and also to apply a um, Harling uh, finished stucco because that keeps uh, being pushed off as well. The cement stuccos are falling off their buildings constantly and they all want a solution and they, they don't remember lime. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just like in the United States. Lime is not that long ago, but everyone seems to have forgotten its value. So, um, that's what we're going to be working on. This is Andy DeGrucci, live on location in Cameroon, Africa, Rinyande. And we're building a school. You can pan around and show them the concrete blocks that they're using to build the school. There's 20,000 blocks made here by hand. Uh, they have a mold and they made them one by one. They had one mold and they made all the blocks by hand. And concrete is king in Cameroon for a uh, major building. They think it's prestigious to use. They don't want to use old mud uh, brick because they're real cheap. However, our friend uh, who we interviewed already, uh, Fred, Fred Augustus. Augustus, Augustine, mm -hmm. he said that uh, they have 400 year old buildings. I found out his, uh, the king of his tribe in Bamenda has a building that has not been touched in 400 years. It's still in excellent shape and they, uh, it does thatch roofs. Recently was replaced with a corrugated metal which uh, on a palace, but the, uh, the thatch roofs, which um, as well Augustine knows how to make, uh, uh, last very long and everything is natural and works in harmony with one another. So we have the theory that of course uh, the softer lime plaster on the exterior buildings, especially on the mud brick buildings, uh, where if you use cement on cement block, it'll work. But when you use the cement, or the people in the, in the villages are trying to use cement with their mud brick buildings and it's causing the bricks to erode and it's causing the pl plaster to fall off and the bricks to erode. So um, I have here quick lime and I have sand and we are going to make a soft uh, mortar and plaster that we're going to show them how to use lime mortar and hope that um, this will solve their problem. Uh, and right now cement is about $12 a bag here. People make about $6 a day here and a bag of cement is about $12. And uh, the lime is not readily available. I had to get quick lime. But we think with supply and demand, if the softer mix works, and so many people are building that way, then they can do a uh, very high lime content mortar. And they're very interested in that because they need places to live and they want to be able to build their own house. So that will take off for that cause alone that is cheaper to buy. But then also, if it lasts much longer, they have to re-stucco their homes every other year because the cement falls off. So that was part of uh, what I'm hoping to uh, bring across to them, even though uh, my son, Avery, and Clayton and I came here just to help building these schools here, and I never intended to get into involved in the line talk, but having seen so many buildings around that were damaged by cement, uh, got me talking, and then I find out Augustine has plenty of examples in his remote village of where all the old methods are still working. Hello. Um, so here we are, and uh, we're going to add some water to this mix, and we're going to start to uh, get the quick line going. Okay, we wanted to fold in, okay, there's a shovel. Tools are a little rare around here, but here we go. I wanted to put some um, sand on top, and I'm going to then add more water, but you can see the quick line is starting to right. take off it immediately, off immediately yeah. and it's causing uh, the water to boil. It's in there, steam is coming from it, and we, want it, we have the sand ready to protect it from all the popping. So I'm gonna to continue to add the water
the ratio is about three times the quick lime. I mean, three times the sand to the quick lime. Okay, we're up at the job site here where we're doing the mock up wall. We have the mortar. You can zoom in on the mortar, Avery. You see the lime inclusions. Most all of the material uh, dissolved. All the uh, hot quick lime has dissolved. Uh, but it, uh, it is very hot. The mix is whew, very, very hot. Um, wish we could see some steam coming off it, but uh, most of that had cooled off since we got it up thoroughly mixing up here. But it was really steaming, and it is very hot to the touch. Uh, I'd say about 80 degrees. So uh, the mix, you know, they call it a hot mix for that reason. Uh, it's hot material, uh, lime, and now we're going to lay it while it's still hot. We're going to lay up these units and then we're going to um, plaster the sides that are just exposed um, uh, mud brick with this plaster material and we're going to lay all the units with it. But then the areas that are cement, uh, Portland cement stucco, we're going to cement, get some new mud made up all of cement and sand and we're going to cement, plaster the exterior, not lay them. We'll all be laid in this lime mud. In a year or so we'll see if the cement fell off and if the lime is still adhering.